the stage the fabulous Mark. Hi. <laughs> My name is Mark. Like every German, I enjoy football, complaining, and talking about the weather. I realize these hobbies go quite well together, so I often complain about the weather. And last Sunday, I even got to complain about the weather during a football match. <laughs> Goosebumps. <laughs> I am the average German, the Deutsche Mark. Maybe it was just a co- <laughs> Maybe it was just a coincidence that my parents gave me the name of our currency at the time of my birth. <laughs> but a lot of people ask me why I wasn't renamed to Euro when, <laughs> when Germany got the Euro in 2002. What most people don't know, the exchange rate runs at two mark for one Euro. <laughs> I have to say that I'm an only child, <laughs> so my parents only had one mark. <laughs> I don't remember much from math class, but I figured out somehow us entering the European Union made me half the man I used to be. <laughs> Otherwise, it might have been hard to fit into skinny jeans. <laughs> hey, I might be a half portion, but I'm a wholesome designer. Honestly, I never thought that I could even become a designer. Growing up in a country full of regulations is not really encouraging for wild creativity. <laughs> the city of Bad Soden, for example, regulates which color sunshades for restaurants can be. Only? <laughs> yeah. Do you know this? <laughs> Only beige, pastel, and sand color. As a designer, let me tell you, these are pretty much shades of the same color. <laughs> Still, that's greater color diversity than you will find under the board members of most German companies. <laughs> I think our regulations are causing headache for a lot of people out there. I mean, we invented aspirin for a reason. It might have been that we invented it to cure our immense thirst for beer. <laughs> Either way, there are many people in this country who take these regulations very seriously, such as myself. What other options did I have? My dad is a tax investigator, and my mom is actually the head warden at a prison. <laughs> and this is not the title she invented for a marriage. It accounts for the whole family. Imagine my childhood, 5.30 a.m., knocking on my cell door. Some fresh clothes are dropped on the floor. <laughs> Some dry bread appears, otherwise known as toast. <laughs> 6 a.m., the cell door is opened. The inmate is transferred to an educational institution. 4 p.m., the bells ring in the end of the educational shift. I try to escape, but... The tax investigator has already caught up, picked up my scent, caught. Anything to declare, my friend? No, Dad, please, just take me home. I think I know now where my addiction to the TV show Prison Break results from. Why every day between 6 and 8 p.m. I'm desperately waiting for visitors. and why my wardrobe mainly consists of striped shirts. <laughs> I got a favorite regulation. It is the crucifix law. Anyone here who loves that regulation as well? <laughs> That's an interesting reaction. Okay, for those who don't know, crucifixes are these little inconspicuous crosses that you hang up the wall at your home. If you're a, through, a, through, a true Catholic, a true conspiracy theorist, 
or if your home is actually a church. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure which of these apply to our Bavarian Prime Minister, Markus Söder, but I'm pretty convinced he's living in a church. <laughs> or at least he wants us to believe that. Either way, either way, our Trump-like prime minister passed this law that every public institution in Bavaria has to hang up one of these crudsy fixes in their offices. I wondered what benefit he saw resulting from that. So I went and did some research. I figured out the world might just not be ready to see the value of our crudsy fixes yet. Here are my top three use cases for your crucifix. Are you ready? Yeah. Number three of the top use cases for your crucifix. <laughs> you will be happy to have your crucifix when your office gets hijacked by a horde of vampires. <laughs> Number two of the best use cases for your crucifix. In every meeting, it will help you to find the right angle. As a designer, it's pretty useful to know if something is exactly 90 degrees. Number one of the best use cases for your crucifix. Ever wanted to leave work after a long, exhausting work day and couldn't find anything to open your cold beer? Your, your crucifix will help you. Yeah, we wild, daring Germans. We've always been ahead of time, ahead of times. Looking back in history, there were a lot of moments where we've tr been trying things the world hasn't been ready for. <laughs> okay, maybe we weren't ready for the world wars, but mayonnaise, equal rights, equal rights for chocolate sandals and chocolate Easter bunnies. And I'm not talking about equality of their weight, size, and deliciousness. Since 1930, German chocolate Sennas and chocolate Easter bunnies are seriously equal per law. Yeah, it, I think that's quite impressive. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I had this moment in life where I realized it is actually true. I remember it being a sunny, uh, rainy Sunday, <laughs> a rainy Sunday in May. 3.30 p.m. German cake time. I've <laughs> I feel some strong cravings for sweets, so I move my ass from the living room couch over to the kitchen, passing the crucifix I had to hang up the other day, trying to escape Jesus' judging looks. I open the cupboard and where I store my secret stash of sweets and stare inside. Four eyes stare back at me. The beginning of a staring contest between a chocolate Santa that somehow survived Christmas food orgy, a chocolate Easter bunny, which I haven't found for Easter, and myself. <laughs> I lose. A sexy Santa striptease and a butcher style flaying of a bunny skin later, two dark brown, naked, ashamed creatures still stare at me. <laughs> Innocent, vulnerable. I am confused. <laughs> Two so differently shaped things are the, are the same deep inside, like wine in bottles and wine in cartridges, like women and men, like West Germans and East Germans. <laughs> okay. I still see doubt in some faces. <laughs> Feel free to visit my mom at work. She will be happy to explain it to you over some nice toast. But better don't wear a striped shirt. You've all seen where this ends. I've been Mark, you've been lovely. Thanks and good night. Well done, Mark! <laughs>